I am JD Wolf and welcome to mission 22 of my Impossible Iron Man campaign. Things have been going pretty good. We have a large scout that had landed in Russia, so we sent Collateral Lockdown, Godfather, Desperado, Fastlane, and Snake Eyes from Africa to Russia for Operation Bloody Knife. So here we are landing. I read you, Big Sky. This was a landing, not a crash. So expect heavy resistance. So the first thing we want to do is see where we are on the map. As you can see, we are in the lower left-hand corner, which is nice. So I would definitely want to follow the left-hand side of the map. So we're going to start off um, with Godfather here. I'm going to send Godfather up uh, behind this tree. And there's a lot of shadowy areas out there, so let's send a battle scanner up to this hill. I love climbing this hill. Uh, we get an elevation advantage up here, but I have been burned by um, there not being enough cover up on the top of the hill. Um, but for some reason, I just love climbing it. Got those tires up there and everything. Okay, so we don't see anything over there, so I'm just going to start moving everyone up. Uh, first, I want to um, let's put Desperado out right here to uh, have her, you know, just cover. Be sure there's nobody out there, and let's position the snipers. I'm gonna send lockdown, yeah, all the way behind this tree. From this this vantage, they're gonna have a good diagonal across the front of that um, of that hill, and then later we'll get to the top of the hill. And Snake Eyes, just for his first move, I'm going to send him over here. And then for the second move, maybe up behind that rock over there for full cover. Our non-snipers, I'm just going to send right up in front of him. Now, I could sprint to the hill, and I probably should, because I do have the battle scanner out there. Uh, but I'd like to have someone on Overwatch at all times. If possible. And here's why. We get one shot on him, five points. And then she shoots her friend in the back, so there's no graphics going out, it's a miss anyway. And for some reason, Collateral still doesn't see him. I guess he ran up behind the tree the entire way. Yeah, Collateral still can't see him. But uh, everybody has a pretty good vantage on this guy, 100%. We're going to have Lockdown just take his first shot of his double tap, and he can't actually see anyone else, so he doesn't get to use his double tap. So double tap's a little weird that way. 85%. 12 points of damage. Very nice. He roars at him, comes forward. And a dash. Now fast lane, I could take her up up there, behind there. It would be nice if she could flank him, but I need to be cognizant of the other muton waiting out there. And that might be a little too far forward and make her too juicy a target. So I'm going to move on to Collateral and take his free shot. Now, it sure seems, and I've been noticing something weird, um, but definitely, you see that he took his free shot and it mo used up half of his turn. He can shoot before he moves, but now instead of getting his full move afterwards, um, it, takes, it takes his first move. Um, so it's not as free as it was kind of a bait and switch and 95% chance to stun I considered moving him up into half cover over there and because the ring of his stun is so great but the game is so wonky sometimes that it might it might have said oh he's out of range now or something like that so I went ahead and took the chance I know he's exposed 
Um, and it's not something I would have done except for the fact that he's got the armor now. Uh, so I am playing a little less cautious um, than I have been for the first 15 missions <laughs> before we got this armor, whatever it was. Alright, we're going to move everybody up into Overwatch. Hopefully this mutant will come forward into our Overwatch. Very similar to the other floating specimens. This one seems to have much heavier armor and weaponry. This does look like a substantial upgrade. So the aliens have moved up to heavy floaters. We're going to take our reaction shot. No graphics coming out of that one. I don't know why. So that's not cool. Sniper. Alright, five points of damage. I think I like the microphone better up here. Um... All right, so we have four aliens now, three heavy floaters and one muton. And he's gonna hide behind a rock. Okay, collateral, he is exposed. He is out in the open here. And I'd really like to move him away, but he has a rocket. So, again, without moving, let's position the rocket to where we can damage all three of them. Now, I want to make sure that I get all three in the blast. And remember, there's an elevation deal. Even though there's a bubble right there, it only seems to really hit aliens on the same level. But uh, that seemed to work. There was one elevation level right there different. And they all took uh, eight points. Alright, Snake Eyes can't see anything. He's behind a, a little hill. I guess that tree is not helping. So, who do we want to shoot first? Now, for some reason, Godfather can only see one of them. So, we're going to have him take his shot. It's only three points of damage. We don't need to take a headshot. Um... With three points of damage, let's see if Fast Lane can get the experience for this one. 72%, pretty good. Kill confirmed. Nice. Okay. Our lead soldier here, Desperado. 74% for the floater floating. And it's a miss on the first one. We hit on the second one. He's down to three points. Alright. We're running out of guys to shoot. Um, so let's go ahead and lockdown has 100% on both. So we're going to take him out. Only took three points to take him down. Double tap. And he's got eight points. Mm, he's got two left. And our problem is Snake Eyes can't see anything. So what we need to do is move him up. And maybe try and take the guy out with a pistol, but also our problem is... We have that muton over there. That's going to hurt. Okay, he can see him. Yay. Oh, no. You see the little cross over the little alien on the right side. That means he can only see him by virtue of squad sight. He cannot actually see him. So what we're going to do is uh, use his turn by throwing a battle scanner. And we can keep, a, keep an eye on this uh, muton over here. And at least next turn be able to uh, get some sniper shots on him. There he is. <clears throat> Alright. Now, Godfather, he can only see one. Oh, and that is the one he can see. 75% with a headshot. Can we do 10? Only 5. Bummer. Intimidate. And it does intimidate him. Godfather. He has enough ammo. He panics, takes a shot, takes him out. Now, that's the kind of panic I like. They can all panic doing that all day long, and I'd be happy with that. 
And of course, Collateral, who is now exposed, takes 10 points of damage. Ow. Gotta get him behind some cover. But, um, our heavy floater only has two hit points left. So again, I'm gonna do the bullet swarm, 45%. It's a miss. I'll get him next time. And I sent him behind cover, and that's the end of his turn. So bullet swarm definitely working much differently than it did originally. Desperado is out of ammo in her main weapon, but she does have a pistol. We only need two points. I'm gonna leave her where she's at, 54% to hit. Flip a coin twice, and both come up tails. Alright, that's not working. Fast lane, 52% for her. Oh, yes. He's down. Ammo out. Alright, and they're all down. Now, what I'm gonna do here is fast forward at four speed. And the idea here is to move up cautiously, uh, maintaining cover. And get up to the top of this hill and though it's cautious I like to uh, sprint um, while we have the battle scanner up okay now we need to be careful topping this hill um, a lot of times there'll be aliens right on the other side waiting for us now they're not always I mean now that we're doing Iron Man impossible they're on patrol more than waiting um, other difficulties they wait <laughs> here they patrol and we do hear them on the other side of the hill so we know something is going on there so I want to get my guys together and everybody reloaded <clears throat> before I um, do anything too foolish here okay we're gonna take lockdown around the side there and behind that rock and he can't see him so even though we're hearing them in that direction they must be quite a ways off so that's cool all right, that lets us move on up. Get everybody. Now we're going to, uh, you see we healed up collateral right there. <clears throat> Excuse me. And, all right. Into full cover. We're at the top of the hill. We're not seeing anything, so that's cool. Now, who put all this garbage up here? We got tires. We got rims. We got old cardboard boxes and stuff somebody was living up here or something all right we're gonna heal uh, collateral the rest of the way and we're gonna throw a battle scanner now see that lump out there that is definitely gonna be the UFO and there it is nice size UFO we're here here in aliens in that direction and I moved Desperado on up and she still doesn't see anything so getting to the top of the hill, it's a nice place for the snipers to hang out. They get good elevation, good lines of sight. And I decided I'm going to move fast lane way out here by herself. And there are three thin men. Two of them off into the fog, but one of them where we can see them. So now the decision is who to take the shot because the other two we need to have overwatches for the other two coming up and around so I'm going to send Desperado run and gun up here behind the tree now she can see two of them and the snipers are better at reaction shots than the other soldier 64 percent is not great but I get two shots at 64 because it's at minus 15 um, so that's actually a better percentage shot than her normal shot would be and so we're gonna take the far guy the one nobody can see oh and only one shot needed 11 points he's out okay let's see if fast lane can do anything with this guy 62 percent it is a hit. We still got one point. Which does not help. 
Our other not our last non-sniper is collateral. So I'm gonna send him up behind the tree here. Hopefully he can see this guy and take him out. And he's too far away. Lockdown has the double tap, so I don't want to use up his double tap. Although I don't know if the double tap applies to reaction shots. Anyway, he has Colonel, so we're going to take Snake Eyes. Oh, nice view. Nice shot. And he is gone. So we have one Thin Man, thin man left. So we're going to put Godfather and Lockdown on Overwatch. And Collateral as well, because he couldn't see anybody. And let's see. Up oh, here he comes. Ooh, two sniper shots. Love the reaction for the snipers. That is awesome. So three up, three down. So the first thing we want to do now, as far as attacking this UFO, is uh, be sure there's nobody else on patrol. I think I want to come right up in the front door. Uh, but right now, let's have everyone reload. While no one is activated. Back in. Good to go. Aliens take their turn. <clears throat> All right. Now, as usual, we're going to have Desperado be the first one to move. Yeah, she's got lightning reflexes. She doesn't have to be the first one to move. But she's the one that gets to uh, run and gun back into cover. And there you go. All right, so without anyone moving, um, we have hopefully the last patrol coming up around. Desperado can see one guy, the far one, 50, 54%. And I decided to just go ahead and take it. One hit, one miss, four points of damage. It was hardly worth it. Especially since we could have shot the um, Berserker and had him move forward into Desperado's line of sight a bit better. 52%. I think that was 62. Does the Intimidate. And he moves on up. Which was kind of the whole point to get the snipers to be able to see him. But now he's down behind this log. And Collateral cannot see him. Collateral is just too far away. gonna have to save him for reaction shots I suppose because he can't in one move move up into good cover 100% headshot for lockdown so let's have lockdown take out one guy back over there with his double tap 100% for him and now we're left with just the berserker I realize lockdown is the colonel but, dang, <laughs> one guy uh, taking out two full-size mutons, one of them at full health, and uh, leaving the rest of the team available, and on Overwatch to take out this guy. He was the only one that could see the, well, no, I guess the others could have seen the mutons as well, but I want, <clears throat> want them to be able to take out this guy. And I don't think the colonel gets to actually use his double tap on reaction fire. It's only on actual shots, so he needs to be taking actual shots, I suppose. One hit, another hit. Oh no, he's coming toward Desperado. We do have Collateral's reaction fire. It moves into collateral sight, I believe. Oh! Ow! Not pretty. Without the armor, that would have killed her. And he can see him, but why he doesn't get to take a reaction shot again I keep getting burned on that one I'm gonna take both shots at 55% that's not working and now I got snipers and I'm like well wait a minute Desperado is the one that took the damage she wants revenge 99% to hit take him out and she's hurt pretty bad that's a serious serious hit they will kill you 
Alright, fast lane has some healing. Let's send fast lane up behind this tree over here. Okay, we're gonna accelerate at four times. Uh, our approach on this UFO here. And I want uh, Desperado, so I'm gonna have her reload. Send fast lane up to heal. And use up her med kits on Desperado. <clears throat> while keeping the uh, snipers reloaded and on overwatch. Send us brought on up to scout. Not seeing anything over there. I want to be sure there's nothing on that side of the UFO either. And there's not. But we do hear something inside the UFO. So it's definitely inside. So we're going to move on up. And I'm thinking we met enough patrols to um, account for everyone. But we still have to be cautious. We're not, you know, as soon as you assume that, you get you get jumped. So we're going to move up nice and slow toward the front door. So I want the snipers to be able to see down inside the UFO and be right behind them. And I used to keep my snipers more on the outside, but now that i got three snipers and... Um, I don't, you know, I want the snipers to be able to add their firepower. So we'll just move everybody on in. Keep them nice and clustered together. They can spread out if, if they uh, encounter an alien. But um, I don't like them to uh, take any shots. So, all right, here we are. We're at the first door, so we're going to open it. Nobody home. Now, these aliens probably started off in the UFO, but with um, impossible difficulty. Let's open the next door. They don't um, they don't stay in the UFO. Only like the captain stays in the UFO. So we're encountering a lot of UFOs with no um, nobody in them. They're all out on patrol, except for the commander. There's something out there. All right, here we are. Now we hear him. He's either directly behind the door or way over in that direction. Odds are he's right behind the door because this is the um, the bridge. So we're going to open the door and there he is. Now he does have a light plasma weapon. So the first thing I'm going to do is send collateral on on, on around. Not heavy plasma. It would be nice if it were heavy. And have him use his second hit. 80% to stun. Ooh, nothing doing. All right, this is where you begin, bring in the big guns. Desperado. Right up in his face. Double shot at 100%. Game over. We nailed it, Commander. Mission accomplished. All right, that's 13 aliens killed. We took uh, a shot to collateral um, and a bad slash to Desperado, both of which we shouldn't have taken. I'm, I'm just getting a little too relaxed having this armor. And with the heavy floaters coming out, um, we need to start being more cautious than that. So I need to keep that in mind. I'm not playing as often as either. Excellent work, Commander. Yeah, it was a good mission. Very good mission. Snake Eyes is all the way up to Colonel. Double tap for him as well. Now we got four plus one. That'll be five sniper shots per turn. That's crazy good. That's awesome. Okay, here we are back at base. Now, let's see, we have uh, ammo conservation, we have ships moving, EMP cannon, Firestorm being uh, developed. All good, good stuff. So let's go ahead and move forward, get the ammo conservation. Three flight computers for 161. I don't know if that's a very good deal. Ammo conservation. Okay. complete. 
So we got some ships that have been transferred. Yes, we now have the EMP cannon. Shiv repair, yeah, whatever. The EMP cannon, huge, huge, huge. All right. Skeleton suit, we've completely skipped. We have Archangel armor, which would be nice. The light plasma rifle, we definitely want to research that. We're going to go ahead and take the autopsy. Specimen. This is the heavy floater. All right, moving on. That'll take two days to research. But now we have EMP cannons. You never know when a UFO is going to show up. So we're not going to wait. So let's see what we have. We have two under construction there, one station there, one in Asia. So we need uh, two EMP cannons just to start. And then we're going to need two more once those uh, firestorms come online. 168 apiece. Whew, it's expensive. 50, 50 alloy. But it's going to be worth it here. And it's exactly how much money we had. All right. When selecting so, a specific jet within the hangar, you can choose to modify its current weapon loadout to best serve our needs. Yeah, he's explaining that because I've never changed the armament on any of these guys yet. But here we are. We're jumping straight to the big guns. The EMP cannon. Love the EMP cannon. It allows us to shoot down the uh, UFOs uh, more intact. Ooh, hit percent. Hit chance is a hundred percent on that guy. That's awesome. And putting them on firestorms, that's just that's just great. All right, so we got two firestorms in development, uh, being to the being aliens, built. Our engineering team has managed to negate billions Here's the situation. of dollars in traditional aerospace development with a single ship. We still have the issue with Russia, and Egypt has a little bit. We have some corpses we could sell. And looking at the value that uh, that offer for those flight computers, it's about 120 credits that I could get for the flight computers just selling them outright. So 161 is not that great. All right. Well, the MP cannons are loaded. Advanced repair. That's going to help repair a little bit no no big deal all right light plasma that's where we need to go we're, we're on the road to plasma Archangel armor would only take six days but it would take 15 alloy to research and then I have all the alloy of actually building it I need to get to plasma the idea is to keep the snipers out of range to where and and I'm not having too much trouble giving them good lines of sight uh, Archangel armor would give them a little bit better they could float up there then they don't have the cover either. All right, eight days out from firestorms. So let's move up to that. There we go. Contact and, it's coming in and a UFO over time Argentina. Oh dear, that's one of the continents we don't have the firestorms yet. So close, but yet so far. So we're going to launch our fighter here. It takes 24 hours to arm them, so even if I bought an EMP cannon, you know, I wouldn't be able to arm them. Maybe I can get lucky. We're going to use the dodge. We're going to use the track. Oh! And we lost that interceptor. All right. Well, you know, we hit him once or twice. Let's take the other interceptor up and see what we can do with him. I'm hoping this is the last time we use interceptors at all. We're going to use those firestorms. Come on, hit. Miss. Then we're going to dodge again. We used up all our dodge and our track. Can't hit the broadside of a barn, and it's, it's bigger than a barn. We hit one, one hit. Commander. And we're out of time. He got away. Contact. Sorry. So it's not uh, not going good for the home team there. But we have the firestorms coming up. So hopefully if this leads to something bigger. I think that's the big ship that leads to a uh, terror attack. Uh, but if it's if it leads to a bigger ship coming in, um, like a battleship, 
if we can get those guys out there. So I'm going to transfer uh, that firestorm to South America. We have these two firestorms. We need two um, EMP cannons. And Europe is where we need the uh, other firestorm. So I'm going to transfer that one to Europe. Yes. All right, we're going to need two EMP cannons when we get money from the, um, it's going to be 168 a piece. It's 25 alloy each um, in reality, so we have 155 alloy, so we're looking good on that. But, uh, I decided to go ahead and get the money now. Let's get the EMP cannons now because we don't know. If we wait for the, um, yeah, see, they're 40 apiece. That's 120. If we wait for the uh, council meeting, we may encounter the UFO and actually need those EMP cannons. So what I'm going to do is come over here. Let's see. I'm also going to want dodge. And boost. Boost is pretty cheap if we had a little bit of money. So let's. Uh, we want to buy those as well. I'm going to check out what kind of corpses we need to keep track of. We want to keep our sectoids, um, keep the floaters, sell the thin men, uh, sell the mutons, sell the berserkers. We want to keep the cyber disc because we need that for one of them, and sell the uh, chrysalids and the drones. And that should be enough. We can get a dodge and a boost. The EMP cannon's going to need 168. We need another 20. So, I could sell 20 weapon fragments, but you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and take the three com UFO computers. We have built, we have used the computers for what we mainly need them for, which is the firestorms. And we have four of them. We have four continents. We're done. So I want one EMP cannon. Another one would uh, we need 168. So we're gonna sell enough weapon fragments to bring us up to 168, which would be uh, what 17, 27, 27. <laughs> okay, there we go. And now we have exactly what we need to buy one more EMP cannon. Nice. I want to get these firestorms in place as quickly as possible. All right, Africa in one day will be covered. South America in transit, Europe in transit. Once it gets to Europe, we can equip it with the EMP cannon. So that'll be three days for transport and then one day for arming. So four days we will be covered. Combat stems. For combat stems, you need berserker corpses, and 630 would be nice and three scientists. But I went and sold all the berserkers. Complete. Okay. And now in Europe, there it is. Up, up, up. There we go. EMP cannon right there. Range is short. We take some shots, but 100% chance to hit, and it's very, very effective. All right. Uh, glance at the foundry. There's nothing that I want to build there. I do want the dodge and the boost. Uh, using the corpses that we have. Thirty uh, credits for one and twelve for another. And 
I decided not to wait for the uh, council meeting, and I'm going to go ahead and sell one of my power sources. I should have probably waited for the council meeting. I'm just so anxious to be able to get this um, get set up and settled with what I need for air-to-air um, -air combat here. One boost, one dodge, in case I need them. You never know what's going to happen. One light, one day for light plasma. Nice. All right. So now we can use our own light plasma. It also allows us to research plasma rifle, which is what we need. There's also plasma cannon, and that uh, attaches to the uh, ship, which we don't need. We need the plasma rifle. Now we may have alloy issues. Um, or weapon fragment issues. I hope not. Coming up soon, so we'll see how we do with the EMP cannon being able to shoot down the UFOs. Ah, okay, here we go. St. Petersburg, Russia. Now, actually, this is a blessing in disguise. Russia has a high panic level. If we can be successful here, we'll be looking good. Uh, so the first thing we're going to want to do, if you look at the stats between the light plasma rifle and the laser rifle, it does 5107, 5107, but it also has a plus 10 to hit. So the light plasma rifle is just a teeny bit better than our laser rifle, and we have one of them, so we're going to give uh, that one to Desperado. Maybe it'll take out cover a little better, maybe not. Certainly seems to work for the aliens, taking out cover. All right, and we're... Uh, not going to go in with uh, the stunner. <laughs> we are strictly combat. So we have collateral with the scope. And we're heading to St. Petersburg, Russia, for the terror attack there. Nicknamed Operation Cryptic Blade. So I hope you'll join me for that mission. Until then, stay safe.